there's no legitimate reason, first and foremost, for gold and silver to be behaving the way they are, other than it's manipulation on many, many levels. And, you know, you can start with saying it's the canary in the gold mine that um, the minute the, the volatility and the counterintuitive action of the gold market, which is in the silver market, which has been pervasive for a very long time is part of the reason that has enabled the dollar to be um, still be the world reserve currency to continue to be um, sought after in terms of global settlement because the fundamentals behind it certainly uh, do not warrant gold price and the silver price where they are. The, I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of, of how this plays out, but what I take away first and foremost from the action on the COMEX is not what is happening with the price, it's what's happening on the platform itself underneath the surface. Last year, um, using the levered paper price alongside the commercial banks, these others are in essence challenging the commercial bank's ability to continue to suppress the price. Because what happened was last year, they took over 300 million ounces of silver off the exchange. They took more gold off the exchange than the uh, Bank of Japan holds in its official holdings. So this, this group of highly sophisticated and informed and wealthy private investors, in essence, has been draining the COMEX for the last 18 months. So that was 2020. You know, by the way, 300 million ounces of silver that were taken off last year, that's a, literally 10 years worth of deliveries and anything I've ever seen. Massive, massive, massive amounts using the, the manipulated paper price. Using, in the jitsu uh, parlance, they're using their opponent's leverage against them. Where in uh, years past, the commercial banks would naked short the price tremendously and it would break the back of everyone and they would cover their shorts, rinse, wash, and repeat, and let it rise and do the same thing again. So let's see what's happening now in 2021. I think you'll see where I'm going with this. So let's go back to, I think it was August 9th. I think that was the date thereabouts when the price of gold fell by $100. And uh, so that evening, it was a Sunday night and, um, the, I believe it was a Sunday night, uh, the price of gold was sitting on the 200 day moving average. Um, in technical analysis, the 200 day moving average, either side of it, very often is the delineation between bull trend and bear trend, especially when accompanied with momentum. So in the middle of the night, 4.35 o'clock in the morning when New York had not opened yet and London had just closed, this is called the access market. It's a little sliver of the market that allow, trades are allowed to be done, but it's certainly not the time to do much of any trading because it's in essence, the market is sleeping um, as it moves from London to New York. So someone in the middle of the evening at this point, 4.35 in the morning, Eastern time, uh, dumped, I believe, 4 million ounces of gold onto the market. You're talking eight, almost $8 billion. Now, uh, actually it might've been a little bit less than that, three or 4 million. The number escapes me, but it's right in that neighborhood. Three to 4 million ounces were dumped right onto the market in the middle of the night. Now, the trader who would have done something like this would have been fired and shot and most likely not in that order. Uh, because what you are guaranteeing to do is drive the price down uh, tremendously. Now, remember, it was sitting on the 200-day moving average, the delineation between bull trend and bear trend. When you add momentum into that, it becomes one or the other, at least in terms of technical analysis. So in the middle of the night, the price drives down through the 200-day moving average as they dump the price or dump, uh, dump millions of ounces of gold at the most unopportune time. Price gets cratered. As it's falling, it hits all the stops that the hedge funds would have been positioned at the long funds on, on uh, the exchange and on Wall Street. All of these funds, their stops, these algorithmic stops would have been triggered the entire way down. Bang, 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 bang. So it keeps falling and falling and falling and falling faster. And by the time it hits New York, all of these funds would have been literally stopped out of their long position even before they got into the office. 
So they get into the office at seven in the morning or whatever time it is. Gold's down to 20, silver's down to 22 bucks, fell over a dollar. Gold's fallen by a hundred bucks. When that happened, several of the commercial banks immediately covered over 2 million ounces of gold. Bang, they covered and the price shoots up 40 bucks. So I'm gonna stop right here for a second before I get to the real piece of the puzzle. And that is the commercial banks probably who pushed the ball down the hill knew that by doing so with momentum would trigger the stops. They knew where all the funds were positioned. The funds sell um, because the, the uh, algorithms that run these funds immediately would have been triggered. They sell, the price falls more and more and more. And the commercial banks then are able to cover old short positions they have at $100 less an ounce and silver at a buck an ounce less. Great, that's what they've been doing for a long time. And there's certainly empirical evidence that show that's what was happening. More relevant to any of this, and this is what I want people to understand, is that I have been on a crusade for the past year and a half talking about the reclassification of gold through Basel III, uh, the others who are massively accumulating gold and silver, the central banks who have been massively accumulating gold and silver, the commercial banks massively accumulating gold and silver, like JP Morgan, who has a, a billion ounces of silver and 35 million ounces of gold accumulated over the last few years, while paying a $920 million fine to the Justice Department. I've been showing how the biggest money in the world has been using the levered price of the manipulated levered price on COMEX to corner the physical market. So when the price fell by a hundred bucks into New York, someone on this other's side knew exactly what was gonna happen because the minute it hits New York down a hundred bucks, what does he do? accumulates 38,000 December gold contracts. What was sold in the middle of the night were December gold contracts. They, um, they forward sold short selling into the marketplace. JP Morgan amassed 1 billion ounces of silver and 35 million ounces of gold, the largest physical position the world has ever seen, paid a $920 million fine for doing so, uh, yet their desk made a billion dollars last year uh, they walked way up 80 million. So, but the point of it is, is that the commercial banks are accumulating massive amounts, even so much as to pay fines to the Justice Department for doing so. You're seeing huge deliveries off of COMEX. So when you talk about how important is it, um, look, uh, there will come a time, I think, when interest rates rise and it will be a, a spiritual experience for a lot of people in this country. And um, rising gold and silver signals, obviously, problems with the currency. They want to keep it muted. But at the same time, their actions betray them uh, because you can see the biggest money in the world is de-dollarizing slowly. 